Right, so what we've got is a 1987 British Army Battlefield Ambulance. Right, it's been converted into a motorhome over the past five years. All right, it's an ongoing project, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but basically what we've got front to back is we've replaced the standard bumper, we've put on a utility spec winch bumper, uh, put the winch protection bar on here as well so we can mount some lights on it and uh, we can protect from other things when we're winching. So then as you go a little bit further back we've changed grills for things like the, the stainless one so if anything comes back it doesn't smash it. Okay, so we've got the light guards here, these are the flat dog ones, uh, pretty decent laser cut out ones and these are to protect the uh, LED headlights got from LVB which are second to none. The, um, I've, had, I've got the cheap eBay ones and they don't do half the distance so it depends. The cheap eBay, eBay ones they're still 10 times better than a normal Land Rover light, there's, there's no comparison but these are the next level again. Um, I've got the bolt-on bits uh, LED lights, which I'm going to change these to smoke ones at some point. We've got the, the tools on top of the wings for obvious reasons. Uh, we've got a spare wheel mount here, because originally I didn't carry the spare wheel here, but we've gone to a twin mount on the back so I can carry two for the vehicle, or one for vehicle, one for trailer, whichever. So we've got a rail system here, this has got the loops on, so if we've got like say cam nets or tarps or anything like that, even a bit of firewood, not ideal, but you could do. Strap that down on the bonnet, ratchet it down. Uh, and up from two snorkels, only one of them is connected to the engine. The other one eventually will be plumbed into the heater, so it gets a bit more of a drawer in there. You're not going to get snow, crap and everything else that comes through it. Got two light bars, we've got the colour changing one. Okay, you've probably seen that on a, a previous video where that'll do all different colours, it's also super bright. Solar panel on the front, that's, uh, I think that's 100 watts, so about 5 amp-ish, going into the battery system at the back. Eventually, there will be more on the roof, but as it is now, this has been doing quite nicely for powering the uh, night heater and fridge. Another cheap eBay special uh, light bar on top, that it's one of them things, it's a little bit redundant now, but it's fitted, it's working, so it just stays on. So that's pretty much the front of the vehicle. So as we're going round, it's, uh, with it being a rolling restoration, there's a lot of parts in a Land Rover that aren't that good quality, but there is good quality aftermarket parts. So, like for instance, the, uh, the steering, every, the, the, bear, the bearings went on the ends of them. So everything's been replaced with heavy duty. Same with the brakes. The brakes, they needed the pad replacing, so it got bigger discs, calipers, better brake pads, everything like that all new braking system, new steering system top to bottom. As I've had overheating issues, that's all been replaced top to bottom, so slowly it is moving on. So we've got the 265, 75, 16 uh, on the Cooper STTs. Eventually these will get changed to the Pros because they are a better tyre. They're, they've got a lot better sidewall on them, but these are working awesome. I've had these about five years now, and they're, they're still fairly new. So we've got a two inch terra firma uh, lift kit and it's the, the full lift kit. On the rear that's been changed again to a lot heavier spring as the, as the vehicle's got heavier and heavier. Again, you'll see these videos a little bit further back the playlist as we've, we've, we've changed things. So with the snorkels it is a watertight system all the way through. The only issue that I'm having with this at the minute is the pipe is getting hot so we can change that for a solid stainless pipe system that can be insulated all the way around in there. Uh, I'm currently running a 200 TDI with auto gearbox instead of the V8 petrol uh, with the manual gearbox on it because I'm lazy and I don't like changing gear in something this size because when you're off-road it just makes life so easy. Cruising around, one less thing to worry about and it, it works really really well. I've had this set up on a few and it, I like it. Some people hate it I think it revs too much but it's personal preference. The diesel um, at the minute, a little bit poorly at the minute because it needs a new setup and we're changing the ratios in the gearbox but on a good day I'm usually getting 25 to the gallon maybe a little bit more which for a 31 year old vehicle I don't think is bad at all. So just in the middle there we've got the CCTV system which it gives 360 uh, view weeks camera on the front we can use for night vision camera on the rear and one either side for the blind spots uh, quite a bit of wasted space up here which it is on the list to remove all the lockers and maybe turn it into a bunk up there 
but at the minute it's it's working all right so as you come down we've got an aftermarket steering wheel to give a little bit more room and so you don't put your elbow through the driver's window when you're turning right we've also gone for the mazda rx8 seats in it which the for, for someone that's six foot three 19 stone you know they they are a comfortable seat for long distance uh, in the centre we've got the Raptor Engineering cubby box which I like this because it's lockable and you can also get the little trays in them you know you can take that out as well loads of room, cup holder, all that stuff and it's a little bit higher so awesome armrest for an auto the Raptor Engineering centre console and Raptor Engineering dashboard cover because what this does is it changes the standard Land Rover switches that cost a fortune to the um, normal ones that you get on eBay or whatever the Carlin ones got the charging points everywhere and the remote for the fridge there this is the Snowmaster one from LVB again it's got the solar panel on here which keeps this topped up and as soon as the fridge comes on it gives you battery voltage of the rear battery how much amperage you got left in it and it gives you the temperature uh, it also it's, it's got its own built-in alarm system to let you know if the power goes off if the lids not shut properly and if the battery is getting low in the rear so very useful bit of kit so you can you can always tell what temperature your beers are at while you're driving the auto gear stick again automatic nice and easy out of the way what we're going to do as well I'm on with upgrading the electrics so the original panels are going to be more and more redundant as I run parallel electrics at the minute I've got another fuse board in here which I'm going to change it to down here so it's easy access if I need it right so as you get to the rear of the vehicle you notice there's lights everywhere on this lighting's not the expensive thing it used to be so there's 360 lighting all the way around because whether you get to a location before people or after people, someone wants to set up, you can bang a light on in that area straight away. It's, it's cheap and it's not hard to do. So with switch panels these days and LED lighting everywhere, it, there's no excuse for it anymore. So 360 lighting all the way around. Uh, as things progress, the, the move further down the vehicle. So this was my original light bar. Now the headlights and everything are way brighter. It's now my reversing light stroke, work light on the rear. So, plenty of options there. Twin spare, spare wheels on the rear, uh, you know, redundancy again. The, you never know how many wheels you can go out and the people that I go out with, we all run the same wheels, the same tyre size, everything. So, you know, you, you may just get some knob of a walker that's put some nails in a, a, a puddle, which does happen, and you take out two tyres. So, there you go, there's your two tyres. Uh, homemade grill on the rear of it. I would like the nice fancy stainless one, but 100 plus pounds when you can make one. My friend's very, very helpful with stuff like that, so awesome guy, always uh, always sorts me out. Uh, again, we've got the LED lights on the rear, replacing the original ones, and the NATO hitch. I do tow with this every now and again, but it's a bit of a pain now. I've got the twin rear wheels, so it's few and far between these days. Uh, camera on the rear, and another awning. Awnings on three sides of the vehicle. Reason for this is, um, everyone wants somewhere dry to get in and out of so the one on the rear it's the armadillo one uh, it's, it's decent quality it's getting older this now so it's getting a little tatty but uh, it's, it's an old awning and it's, it's stood up to it so that comes out it's got a side wall on it and when you've got the door open as well it gives you a fair bit of protection from the elements the ones on the side I had the 270 tough trek one but it fell to bits so I've replaced it with I've gone super simple and I've gone to the MOD, the 18 by 24 10 connectors. I've cut this one down the middle. I did have the large one, but I've gone for two smaller ones. Uh, I've got one on either side. So all we do is we space a vehicle off on whichever side's sheltered. We run the tarp across to the roof racks on the other side, or we can put two poles out, peg it, there's your awning. It's fireproof, it's waterproof, it's green, it's canvas. You can't go wrong. And it's a fraction of the price. If it breaks, it's another pole, another piece of string. It doesn't really matter. So that's uh, the rear of the vehicle. Not a lot much to tell about that. I've got some points on the rear where I can put items in so I can either have 
racks. Uh, I've got a great big rack that comes off the back of this where I can put a small motorbike on or a, a push iron, anything like that. So that's another option. Uh, you've probably seen in other videos as well where I've been standing on it, holding onto the roof racks, filming the rear. So yeah, I, I just like options. At the minute, we're just using these little steps. Reason I've put these in is one, they're the perfect height, and two, for putting the awning away and everything, they're awesome. So there's no messing about standing on wheels and all the rest of it. It's just a good item to have. They need painting up to a, a more neutral colour because at the minute they're shiny and I don't like shiny. So the fun bit, let's have a look in the rear. So when it comes to the rear, we've got the, the red camping light. So this is for your low light areas where you don't want uh, in your face white light killing your night vision and you go back round to the camp and you can't see a thing because I'm not one for walking around with a head torch or torches and things like that. So yeah, we've got that there. And these storage systems, uh, again, these, these are the items that you put in a cupboard and you never see again or that are hard to get to. So everything's just on the door for people. So anyone camping with me, they've got the, the saucers, the cutlery, you know, the, the kitchen roll, the teas, coffee, sugars, the gloves for hot pots and things, some lighting, you know, some uh, little fire steels, little things that everyone, you know, just have you got, they're just there for people. Uh, as you come round, as you come round, you know, we've got little things like your, your notebook, odds and ends, you know, so you can take notes, your single serving items that are great for just making your breakfast or whatnot. Uh, some shells, just uh, if, I, if I want to grab a, grab a few shells for some reason. And we've got batteries for all my filming gear, charging leads for all my filming gear, brush, odds and ends for tidying. As we come down, we've got the Snowmaster fridge. Uh, I'm loving this. Went for years and years without one. You don't need one, but once you've had one, you'll replace it tomorrow if it ever broke. So, yeah, it's, it does everything under the sun. And uh, for the price, you can't complain because it's got the high-end compressor in it with a warranty. As we come down, camp axe. Uh, we've got a hose system. So when you're leaving camp, you can, if you wanted to, you can hose everything down. You've got a fire, you can put it out. Uh, or more than anything else, sometimes you just need to top things up with water. So it's one of them things, it's not expensive to do, so why wouldn't you? Chainsaws normally stowed under the bed, but at the minute, because we've been going here, there and everywhere, it's handy at the back door. So underneath here, this is where the original steps would have been. And they, they folded down, but there was hell of a draft and it was wasted space. So, what we've got here now is spare parts, recovery gear, little things like that. So, we've got, again, gloves, tie wraps, box spanner for wheel bearings, with um, odds and ends. We've got spare UJs, we've got brand new recovery gear. You know, you've got your belts, you've got your hoses, you've got spare hoses for everything. Uh, just one of them things, I'd rather be looking at, the, at it than for it, so it's that kind of mentality. I am only now in about putting a very small winch in here and having uh, an entry. Only like an ATV thing, which it won't pull the vehicle, but it will pull someone's trailer out. Or if I'm tilting over, it's one of them things you can run through a pulley and just keep you on the wheels. So, just options again. So just inside the back door, uh, I like to keep items like my woody wood prepper stove that folds out, cracking fire. It's one of them things, as soon as you pull out, these are the items that get put straight out and in use. Got the Ridge Monkey water butt, which everybody's always in. Uh, really, really good item to have. And inside, something that nobody had when I did this, but now every man and his dog's got, is the nice interiors instead of the Overlandy style ones. So this was made by Bus Stop VW, awesome company in Sheffield, really, really helpful. Uh, I saw this, basically this is a, a long wheelbase T5 transporter one, but what they did is they stretched all the measurements taller because I've got a lot more room to play with inside. So they were dead helpful with that. And then as I've gone along, I started with this unit, then I've had this one made, and then they've made some other little bits and pieces for me that I've assembled myself because, like I said, they're dead helpful. On the inside, so we've got a twin burner here for all your cooking, a sink there for your cleaning, instant on-demand hot water, again just a China special and that's that's just, it's got some desal batteries in it which is the igniter, you put pressurised water which we've got plenty of here and gas into it and that's uh, 
a nice cheap way to, to have hot water in your, your thing. The only thing I'd say with this is you've got to have the door open because it is just venting inside, which it's not ideal, it's an outside shower. But at the end of the day, it's still a good option when it's cold outside. So tons and tons of overhead storage. Uh, we've got the great big med kit, uh, which that, that's awesome. That's, that takes a mind off because we all play silly games with uh, axes and chainsaws and and all the rest of it so that's an awesome item to have really really appreciate having that uh, and a lot of people don't have that kind of thing uh, on the vehicle which is a bit worrying when you think how far help is if you need it uh, as we go along we've got things like hammocks tarps waterproofs uh, special force shovels things like that all your camp items so here we go here's the uh, solar controller so basically the solar panel comes into here uh, very easy setup. There's a lot of nicer setups out there now, but this is one of them things where it's been a rolling progression, so eventually we'll, we'll upgrade again. So, and then that just comes down bottom of this cupboard. We've got the diesel night heater, which is controlled just there. Uh, set the temperature and it just stays at it. Uh, we've got the battery bank just in here, which is getting upgraded again to lorry style batteries. And loads and loads of storage. Storage everywhere, so... Yeah, you can carry all the extra cookware, you can carry the extra pots, pans, food for extended periods of time, clothing for multiple people. Uh, it makes it makes having a larger vehicle worthwhile. So underneath here we've got the onboard water tanks. There's around 50 litres in the main tank, plus the water butts, plus the jerry cans, everything else. And that can be filled up from a, an external source and filtered. We can turn this backwards so this can be uh, you can take this hose out to somewhere and pump it straight into the uh, the side, into the water tank here. We've got loads more storage under the bed. The bed system at the minute it's the American style one where it rotates and folds over, but that's getting changed. I'm going to put a linear actuator on a new frame, uh, so that'll be on the control of a button, and it'll just fold out. All done, nice and easy to get to your stuff because there's a little bit of wasted space with the way that this one works, and I want to have some new cushions made anyway. So that's pretty much the rear of the vehicle. Right, so that's a little run through of it. The next job we've got going is we're changing the gearbox ratio to lower it down a little bit, because it's a little bit high. That's easy change, because at the minute it's a discovery one for high cruising speed. But with the weight that I've got to now, it needs bringing down to get that power back on the motorway. I've also got a locking rear uh, diff in the rear axle, which is heavy duty Paris Dakar one that's going on and a limited slip diff to go in the front of, front axle. So that's to come very, very soon, along with uh, it's getting a tune and a slight alteration on how that all works. So a bit more power uh, and it's brought down a little bit because we don't need the 60 to 90 mile an hour range on the gearbox. So we're going to get rid of that and then just extend that area. So any questions? comment down below uh, give us a, a like and a share and all that stuff subscribe if you haven't already we've got more of these videos coming there's also a back catalogue of videos to, to have a look at if you're interested